<laughs> All right, well, good morning. Good morning. I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and to, to speak to you guys. I, uh, I, I haven't done a men's retreat before, so uh, this is my first time, and, and I definitely appreciate uh, the opportunity to come out here and speak. Um, and and I, uh, I always appreciate um, hearing guys who are good speakers, like Mark and, and Chris and Jack, and, and uh, I, I appreciate you guys and the lessons that you brought also. Um, my uh, topic for this morning is to talk about the benefits of fellowship, of, of biblical fellowship in particular, and also to talk a little bit about uh, the sacrifices that go along with that, because fellowship doesn't always come for free. It's something we have to work at, right? And, and just like everything that we have to work at, that's going to entail uh, having to give up some other things, having to pass by on some other things. And uh, as I was preparing for this and thinking about what I was going to talk about, <clears throat> uh, I, I remembered I, I had just recently taught on Hebrews chapter 10. So if you want to open with me, uh, we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 10. <clears throat> And I want to start off just by reading verses 19 through 25. Hebrews 10, 19 through 25. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day drawing near. <clears throat> I'm sure you can uh, figure out why I thought of this as my uh, first passage when we particularly talking about do not forsake to meet together. That was one of the first things I thought of when I talked about the fellowship. Fellowship is a time for us to be together. Uh, we can't have fellowship if we're not coming together. <clears throat> But I want to actually roll back, and we're going to talk first about just the, the benefits, and then we'll talk about the sacrifices that are mentioned in these verses. And I have seven that I want to talk about, three benefits and four sacrifices that we have to make. <clears throat> the first benefit that I see here uh, is in verses 19 and 20, where we read about the confidence that we have to enter the throne room of God, to come before God, to come into the holiest of places, and that is because of the sacrifice of Christ. And what he says here is that because of that sacrifice of Christ, we have confidence. Confidence is a wonderful feeling to have, isn't it? Uh, when we have confidence, uh, we can do a lot, particularly as, as men. We like to feel confident. Uh, it's not good when the ground is shaky beneath our feet. We, we feel off balance, and, and we have a hard time leading in, in those kinds of circumstances. Um, down in verse 23, he says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope. <clears throat> Because we have this confidence, because we have a firm footing in the sacrifice that Christ made for us, we have something that we can hold fast to. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I played soccer uh, only for one year when I was a kid, and it's because we lost every game and I never wanted to play again. <laughs> We didn't lose every game, we just didn't win any games, because you could finish soccer in a tie, and that was the most frustrating thing to me. It's like, I'd rather just lose than say, everyone's a winner. I, I didn't like that very much. But one thing our coach would have us do before the games was a shin guard check. And the way he had us do a shin guard check was, you picked out a teammate, 
He walked up to him and kicked him in the shin. <laughs> and if you didn't have your shin guards on, you would not have a lot of confidence going into that shin guard check, would you? <clears throat> One of my friends told me baseball players would do a cup check in a similar way, and I was like, I'm not playing baseball. I'm not playing baseball. But uh, if you don't have your shin guards on, then you don't have the confidence that you need, right? Um, if you aren't absolutely certain that you are prepared, uh, then you know that that pain is awaiting you. <clears throat> and one of the benefits of fellowship, when we read these verses, it's something that we all have in common. It's, it's a, a commonality amongst us, and it's really the cause of our fellowship in the first place. Without the sacrifice of Christ, Without the promise, without the hope that we have in the sacrifice of Christ, we wouldn't all be in this room this morning. Um, this is the basis for our fellowship. And when we think about our fellowship, it has to be founded on the sacrifice and the memory of Christ. <clears throat> um, do you have anyone in your families who likes to play devil's advocate or, or just likes to argue? That's Saying devil's advocate is the nice way of saying it, right? Really, they just like to argue. <clears throat> um, I, I do. <laughs> and sometimes uh, they will argue, even though they aren't really uh, believing the thing that they're taking the side of, right? They're debating something and they're standing on a side that they don't really uh, even believe. And, and whenever that happens... <laughs> It's hard to argue from that spot, right? Or maybe you're the person who likes to do the arguing. And uh, if you ever find yourselves in a spot that you don't really believe, um, <clears throat> it can be difficult to argue from a place where you don't have that firm footing. We will always have firm footing in the sacrifice of Christ because that is the truth. And when we think about truth, that's a word that's, uh, becoming harder to define for people outside of the faith, isn't it? Because what is truth? Well, we believe that truth is objective. It's something that we can point at. It's something that we can see. It's something that we have faith in from the Bible. But <clears throat> truth is becoming more and more <coughs> muddled. People are throwing dirt on the truth and, and muddying the waters that were once clear. Uh, but as fellows... As the fellowship of believers, we have the truth. And that's the first benefit of our fellowship. Moving on into verse 24, we see uh, it begins with, let us consider one another. You know, this is not just a, 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 a baseless statement. Let us consider one another. Because... <clears throat> Uh, that requires an action also, doesn't it? Let us consider one another. I read one time that one of the hardest things, one of the biggest struggles uh, of a homeless person is when people won't even look at you. When people start to just look over you or pass over you or, or won't even consider you. Uh, and we as brothers, we as the fellowship of believers, we need to make sure that there's no one in our congregations, that there's no one in our <clears throat> um, um, group of believers who feels as if they're being passed over, as if people are looking past them. We need to consider one another. I think that as we consider one another, we're going to uh, help people to feel uh, uh, bolder, to feel noticed, to feel more welcomed. <clears throat> and uh, as we, we talk about this considering one another, it can be hard to do, <laughs> particularly, uh, I think, for men. I think it's something that we struggle with maybe more than women do. I know my wife is better at noticing who's there and who's not there than I am uh, on, on any Sunday. I know that... Uh, <clears throat> We have women who have uh, started a card club, and it wasn't meant to be a women's group, but uh, there aren't any men in our <laughs> card club. Uh, they're better at considering people and, and, and making sure that people feel noticed and that people uh, are, are getting noticed. <clears throat> 
Um, it's something that I can look back and say that I know that I needed this as a young adult. And it's something that I maybe missed out on as a young adult. And when I was in college and I was so far away from home and, and down in Arkansas and and uh, a part of it I brought on myself because I didn't engage myself with a, a congregation there. I, at first, at least, I ended up going to a small church of around 40 people out in the, out in the fields. But um, <clears throat> my first couple years there, I didn't really uh, land on a church. I kind of bounced around and went from place to place, which is easy to do in a place when there's so many churches around, right? <clears throat> I needed someone to notice me and just to say, hey, uh, why don't you come to uh, my house for a study? Uh, why don't you come join our uh, young adults group who's doing this this weekend? Uh, I needed someone to notice me and to offer that. And when we are uh, doing our fellowship correctly, that is something that we're doing is, is noticing people uh, and making sure that we are considering one another. <clears throat> and then we, we move on, <clears throat> not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of son, but exhorting one another. And so much more as you see the day approaching, exhorting. Uh, and in another version there, it says encouraging. And I like that word encouraging because courage is something that I want to have, right? I want to be known as someone who is courageous for the gospel, as someone who is courageous for uh, the word of God. I want to be a, a warrior. Uh, we talked about David and Jonathan. You talk about some warriors uh, I love reading the list of David's mighty warriors and, and just some of the feats that these guys could do, some of the phenomenal things that these guys could do. And, and they're battling giants and they're fighting off full squads of Philistines and of bad guys. And, and it's stuff straight out of Hollywood, right? It's, it's, it's stuff that um, <clears throat> we couldn't probably do ourselves. Uh, and, and I look at that and I'm like, man, I wish I had that courage. I wish I had that uh, uh, ability. But I can have that courage. And I can get that from my brothers in Christ. Uh, I can get that from our, our fellowship together. And as we spend time together and as we encourage or, or as we consider one another, we're going to grow in that courage. Uh, we support each other and, and we feel that, uh, we feel that the courage is, is something that grows within us. And the more that we spend time around one another, the more certain we can become of that truth and the more courage we can begin to feel. <clears throat> because we know we are surrounded by our uh, band of brothers. We are surrounded by other men who are going to stand for the same things that we're going to take a stand for. We know that we're surrounded by men who have our back when we do something that's going to be uh, unpopular, uh, when we take a stand that people aren't going to like. Yeah. We encourage one another by being around one another, by supporting the same truth as one another. And, and we see this. I, one of my favorite <clears throat> um, uh, one of my favorite <laughs> sports to watch is actually hockey. And uh, I like watching hockey because when I was a kid, I got a hockey video game and I liked playing the hockey video game. And I thought it was really cool because it was like two games in one. You could play hockey and then there was also the fighting mode in it when, uh, <laughs> when the gloves came down and the, yeah, and the sticks went down and, and, and you're actually controlling the brawl going on. Um, <clears throat> and you see this. In hockey, where, where the, the bench is clear and everyone's out there just punching each other. You see it on baseball. People are charging the mound, right? You'll see it at, at football games. There's, but these teammates, these people who are on the same sports team, that's all they have in common, right? Is that they have the same logo on their chest. But they have each other's back, particularly when the adversary uh, is... is uh, taunting them or is bringing them down or is attacking them. They have each other's back. <clears throat> and when I say, uh, I, I look at that and I see, man, 
all they have in common is that logo across their chest, and that could change in a year, couldn't it? It changes quick. People move around quick. Um, if you're a football fan, right now free agency is going on, right? And players are going from place to place, and, and it, it changes a whole team. Everything seems so different. <clears throat> but they have each other's backs. What if we as Christians have each other's backs that way? That's where we get that courage from, right? That's where that comes from in, in knowing that uh, we have the same, well, seal on our forehead. I've been teaching Revelation recently too, <laughs> right? Uh, we have that same seal from God of the Holy Spirit, and we have each other's backs. That's where we can draw courage from as men. That's another benefit of fellowship. <clears throat> um, so, so we have these. Uh, uh, we have these three benefits, right, to fellowship. We have the truth that we all stand on together. We have a community of support as we consider each other, and we have our brothers in arms as we go to battle uh, with. Uh, evil, uh, with what's wrong, sometimes with the world it feels like, uh, but really just standing for Jesus, standing for the truth. But this fellowship doesn't come without cost. <clears throat> uh, and, and we've all counted the cost, but in this passage, I, I found four things that I think are worth bringing out as, as things that are um, sacrifices that we'll have to make, things that we'll have to give up if we want to be a part of this fellowship. Uh, first, in verse 23, uh, we talked about holding fast to the confession, and, and what a blessing that is, because we know that we are holding to the truth. But it says, hold fast to the confession of your hope without wavering. If we want to join in the fellowship, as we join in the fellowship, we have to <clears throat> give up uncertainty. Uh, we have to move past that uncertainty. <clears throat> and, and that's something that takes time, right? We don't get there right away. Uh, everyone has to work through things at their own pace. And, and we, but we have to make sure that we are all growing and that we are leaving behind the uncertainty that would cause us to waver as we hold to the, the hope that we have in Jesus. <clears throat> um, as a man, what we do, uh, or what we say, what we confess, has to be borne out relentlessly through our actions, through the things that we do. What we say and confess has to be shown through how we live our lives. <clears throat> Um, I, I was thinking the other day about, uh, there was an old series of Pepsi commercials and I thought they were hilarious. This was back when Kyrie Irving was a uh, point guard for the Cleveland Cavaliers and, <clears throat> um, and, and he would put on all of this, <laughs> this makeup and he'd put on a wig and he would dress like an old man. And they would make Kyrie Irving, he had like a professional makeup team, and, and he'd go out there and he'd just look like an old man. And people would be talking smack, of course, right? Oh, man, what you, you can't get out here. You can't play with us. Like, oh, man, you're going to be a liability. Oh, man, you can't get out here. <clears throat> and then he'd go out there and he'd mess around a little bit and throw up some bad shots and stuff. And they'd be like, oh, I'm going to shut you down. Or... Uh, uh, I'm going to just just destroy you. Like, you don't have a chance. But really, he's a professional basketball player in disguise, right? And then as the video, as the commercial would go on, <clears throat> he would end up breaking someone's ankles and, and dunking <laughs> on them. And it's just like, oh, like, it dressed up like this old man the whole time. And it was, it was just funny to watch. And they called him Uncle Drew. They called him Uncle Drew. Um, and I've had friends like that, right, <clears throat> uh, who insist that they can do something until it's time for them to do it, right? Uh, uh, my nephew just told me a story. He plays basketball. And, sorry, give me one second. He said there's a kid in his gym class who would always say that he could play for the school team if he wanted to. Uh, have you heard someone say something like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I could do it if I wanted to. I just, uh, I don't have any interest. And, uh, Josiah said he, he wanted to play him one-on-one. -on -one. And so Josiah played him one-on-one. -on -one. 
Now, Josiah, my nephew, he just turned 13 in January. He's taller than I am. He dunks with ease, uh, and, and he's a good ball player. And he said, I just destroyed him. He said it wasn't even close. But he said that after they played, the other kid still said that he could beat him one-on-one. -on -one. He just didn't do it that day. I'm like, I wish I had that kind of confidence, right? <laughs> but uh, uh, if we have that kind of confidence, the only thing we should have it in is in the sacrifice of Christ. Uh, we have to have unwavering confidence and, and unwavering confidence that he can forgive us. That's something else for us to remember also, right? Uh, that as we struggle uh, and, and as we live, we're, we're trying our best. We've given our, our lives, we've given our hearts over to Christ, over to God. <clears throat> and that even as we live for him unwaveringly, he stands for us unwaveringly. Uh, and, and brings us before God so that we can make our requests known to him. So I know that was supposed to be a sacrifice, but that also sounds like a blessing, doesn't it? That we can have not just the truth, but unwavering truth. <clears throat> um, we continue on here, and, and it says, uh, Let us consider one another in order to <coughs> stir up love and good works. Uh, so the second sacrifice that we have to make is uh, we give up complacency. Since we have a community of support, we give up complacency. <clears throat> Can I stir you up without being stirred up myself? Um, uh, maybe in an extreme case, it's like, I don't want to be like that guy. Uh, that's the only way, right? That's the only way that you should stir someone up without being stirred up yourself. No, we all have to be stirred up together. That's what he's saying here. <clears throat> Uh, let us uh, consider one another so that we can figure out how to stir one another up unto love and good works. <clears throat> um, if a, a community is all uh, provoking one another, uh, that's another word that's used here that I like, right? Provoke one another unto good works. And we use provoke in a little bit different way, right? That means like almost an annoyance, right? We're, we're making each other angry. And, and be, as we make each other angry, we're going to go do good works. And that's just funny in my head uh, mm -hmm. that it's like a, a needling kind of, right? Uh, well, if you think of the word spur, spur is another one that's used here sometimes. Horses don't like spurs, do they? That's why they go faster because they want you to stop kicking them with the spurs, uh, uh, we, we need to be driving one another in that way, and not that we should be annoying or causing one another pain, but uh, uh, <clears throat> it should be that strong of a motivation that we get from our brethren, that we get from our fellowship with one another, uh, that it's going to drive us forward. <clears throat> um, and, and it should be all of us doing this together. Uh, uh, we can't have a, a stirred up congregation if there's only three people who are uh, working, right? If there's only three people who are trying to do everything. If I, as a kid, took a rock and threw it into a hornet's nest, it's not just three or four that are coming out after me, is it? No, all of them are coming out, and all of them are swarming after me. They are all stirred up, and I'm trying to find a creek or a lake to jump into, right? <clears throat> you, think about, you think about ants, and you see an ant hill, and there's, not, there's only one ant that's just laying around, right? And that's the queen. And all the rest of them are doing their jobs. All the rest of them are working. Uh, <clears throat> I think about a uh, band. I was a, a band kid in high school, <clears throat> and if... Uh, uh, if there was someone playing, particularly if there was someone in, maybe say the percussion section with the drums, who was playing too slow every single song for my entire high school career, 
then that causes problems for the band, doesn't it? That causes the whole band to slow down because particularly the percussion is the uh, where the tempo is kept. And, and so we can't be the people who are dragging down the whole band. We can't be the people who are slowing down the whole congregation. We want to be spurring one another We want to be stirring one another up. And and so it's just getting hotter and hotter and higher. And the flame is higher and higher and higher. You know, we have talked about how the church is supposed to be a body. and, and, And when one part of the body stops working, it affects the entire body, doesn't it? And, and this is, I think, why it's so important. You can look at the, the tiniest parts of the body, something uh, in the ear that can cause your whole body to be dizzy. Um, how if you lose an eye, you can lose all your depth perception. How losing a toe and you're off balance all the time. Even the small parts of the body are important. And if a part of the body isn't serving its function, <clears throat> then the body is not going to be working properly. So when we stir one another up in in our congregations, it it causes that congregation to grow hotter and and it can grow other churches in the area to grow hotter too because everyone (laughs) has a friend at another church, right? Or everyone has a relative at another church or everyone um, has a connection at another church. And when you say, well, our church is doing this, then they're going to go and say, well, hey, their church is doing this, and I think it's a good idea. And that can start something over here. And so as we stir one another up, and as we grow the fire within each of our uh, local congregations, that fire spreads to to other parts of the body. And I, I, as I think it was Chris who was saying, Uh, Even though we generally talk about our church at the congregational level, the body is universal, isn't it? Um, When we say, uh, well, Canal Church of Christ, it's not really just Canal Church of Christ. The Church of Christ is the church. Um, it's in Canal, it's, in, it's at Rome, it's at Cerrito, it's, it's at Pine Grove, it's at Flatwoods, it's everywhere. We are the church. Uh, Not individually, but universally as a whole. And we all need to be spurring one another on, stirring up one another to good works. We can't do that unless we sacrifice complacency. Uh, We have this passage, and this is really what brought me to uh, Hebrews chapter 10 about not forsaking the assembly uh, as we come together, right? We, we can't forsake the assembly. That's something else that we have to give up. Since we have a, a community, again, we give up our time. We have to give up our selfishness. <clears throat> uh, why is this something that people struggle with, coming together? Why is it something that people struggle with? Well, maybe it's, um, maybe it's fear. Maybe they don't come together because uh, uh, they... they <clears throat> well, we'll come to that. Uh, we'll talk about fear in just a minute. Maybe they don't come together because they're just not interested in coming and being a part of the congregation. I'm a Christian, I, but I, I don't really want to come and just join a group. Um, maybe they have a misunderstanding. Well, I don't think it's that important for all of us to come together. You know, well, that's not true, but, but maybe they have that misunderstanding. Maybe they're unsatisfied with the local congregation in some way. Well, that person goes there, and I don't like that person. Well, the preaching isn't all that good there, so I don't want to go there. Uh, Maybe maybe that's why people don't come. We have to combat these in, in different ways. We have to make sure that we're getting people to prioritize the church and, and bringing them to an understanding of why it's important for us to come together. And, and we have to convict people that even if there's something about a church that they don't like, uh, they have to be able to get past that because ultimately the church is made up of people and that's going to be a problem wherever they go. Uh, <clears throat> And we have to be able to give up these things of, of selfishness and, and give up of our time in order that we can all <clears throat> come together and work together and have that strong fellowship. Um, 
and I'm kind of cooking because I'm, I'm running out of time. But uh, finally, we have, uh, <clears throat> since we have brothers in arms, uh, one, one of the benefits of fellowship, since we have brothers in arms, we have to give up fear. Uh, we have to give up fear because <clears throat> we have each other's back. Sometimes uh, we think of uh, meekness and we, we might equate that with timidity. I heard a really good description of meekness recently. It's, it's a war horse with a bridle, all right? Something with immense power, but it's power under control. And, and <clears throat> when we talk about how we are to be encouraged and how we have to give up fear <clears throat> we have meekness but not weakness now i know uh, sometimes we are uh, have to show uh, the areas where we struggle right sometimes we have to communicate sometimes we have to articulate the areas that we struggle and and that may be called weakness by certain people but but really being able to come out with that is is a strength um, it's not really showing weakness, but rather it's a desire to grow stronger, which is not weakness. Um, weakness is an aversion to growing stronger. Weakness is keeping away from growing stronger. And, and when we talk about being encouraged and giving up fear, uh, we have to be prepared to do whatever it takes for each of us to grow stronger. As we grow stronger in a community, as we grow stronger in our fellowship, <clears throat> um, if you're the weakest link, and you're the weakest link forever, uh, then eventually you get left behind, don't you? I, I think about uh, playing sports a lot, and... and uh, uh, if you are the worst player on the team, and then the next year you're the worst player on the team, and then the next year you're the worst player on the team, you're not going to be on the team for much longer, are you? <clears throat> because there's no growth there. Even in battle, if you are the weakest link and, and you're causing your, um, your, your comrades to uh, lose their lives as they try to protect you, eventually you're going to get left behind because you're a liability to the people who are serving the purpose. Uh, and, and our purpose is to uh, further the gospel. Um, only Christians make more Christians. I've always liked that saying. As we are trying to grow the church, as we are trying to grow stronger at our individual congregations and in the church universally, as we try to uh, bring people in and strengthen the people already there, if someone is continually the one who is dragging us down and, and, and bringing us down eventually, uh, that's a problem that has to be fixed. <clears throat> we have to convince that person that growing stronger is a goal. <laughs> growing stronger is a good thing, and it's something that we need to be targeting. And, and the only thing that keeps us from growing stronger, well, is things like apathy and, and things like fear. <coughs> and those are things that we can't have anymore when we grow into our fellowship together. <clears throat> you know, growing in fellowship doesn't happen without top-offs. <laughs> it doesn't happen without times like this where we can gather together and we can talk about things that we might struggle with. We can come to know brothers who are at congregations just down the road from us, people that we can work together with for the sake of the kingdom. <clears throat> fellowship doesn't happen without intentionality. It doesn't, so it's not something that happens by accident. And, and I had just a few more things, and, and I promise I'm almost done. <clears throat> but um, when we talk about how to grow in fellowship and, and just how to be stronger men in general, I think one of the things that I, I wanted to bring out was something that Jack also mentioned, and that was, it is really important for us to have uh, another fellow in our lives. Uh, and when I say that, I mean 
it's really important for us to have a guy best friend that we can talk to. Um, you know, I've heard people say, well, my wife is my best friend. <laughs> well, that's okay. Uh, that's a good thing uh, that your wife is your best friend, but you also need to have a guy who's your best friend uh, because we can build each other up and encourage each other in a way in areas and with things that sometimes we can't talk easily to our wives about, right? Uh, we have to make sure that we have someone who can lift us up, who we can build up, and who can build us up in return, the way David and Jonathan had each other's backs. <clears throat> we have to make sure that we're leading our houses, that we're leading in our homes, that, that we are, <clears throat> in the biblical sense, the man of the house. <clears throat> we can't grow as a church. The church cannot grow with weak male leadership. And it starts in the home. We have to make sure we're leading our homes and growing in that area <clears throat> if we want the fellowship to grow. Um, we have to do hard things. <laughs> Sometimes we don't want to do hard things. Uh, I think that's part of why the curse for Adam was that he would have to toil for the land, right? Because we don't always like doing hard things as men. But we have to brace ourselves and prepare ourselves to do hard things if we want the church to grow stronger and if we want the fellowship to grow stronger. <clears throat> we have to be bold for Christ. Uh, that's the most important thing on this list, really. And I think as we're bold for Christ, we'll, we'll grow in all of these other areas. If we're sincere about uh, growing in his strength and, and coming to know him better and trying to emulate him more, I think we'll grow in all of these other areas also. <clears throat> so my encouragement for all of us, my, uh, I guess, mission for all of us, is to remember the blessings that we have in fellowship together and to be willing to make the sacrifices that we need to make in order to grow in that fellowship. Since we have the truth and confidence, we give up uncertainty. Since we have a community of support, we give up complacency and selfishness. Since we have brothers in arms, we give up fear. Mm. Let's pray together. <clears throat> God, we come to you now, and we're grateful for this opportunity. We're grateful for this weekend that we've had for all of us to come together. And, and God, I pray that we will build each other up and that we will turn each other more and more to focus on you. God, help us to be men. Help us to grow strong and, and to be that, uh, the, the leadership that the church needs, to be the, the men that the church needs. And, and God, in the areas that we struggle, we pray that we can build one another up. Uh, uh, I, my strengths are not uh, everyone else's strengths. Help me to use my strengths to, to grow them and, and help them to use their strengths to grow me. And, and God, just help your church to be more and more firmly established because of the fellowship that we have together. God, help us to not let anything get in the way of that fellowship, of that unity as we try to grow your church. Help us to sacrifice the things that keep us from that fellowship and from that strength. And thank you for Jesus, most of all, God. And thank you for allowing him to come and to uh, live his life in a, a body like ours and, and for him to give his life on the cross for our sins. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Bill. That's been a blessing to us this morning. I appreciate that. Uh, some quick announcements.